Yes, a very good evening to you tuned in to UBC TV. Thank you so much for keeping it with us. And like we promised, here we are, UBC one-on-one -on -one with Michael Jordan Lukomwa. We look for those figures that have information that is for the good of you, the Ugandan, and whoever watches this program. And this evening we have another figure of that kind, or even bigger than the figures we have had on this show. He's a senior politician in this country. He has headed one of the oldest political parties. He has stood for presidency of this country in the 1980 and in 1996. So join me, welcome Dr. Paul Kawanga Semo Gerere, with whom you're going to look at Uganda yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Doctor, we are so honored to have you on this show. You're welcome. Mm. How are you doing? And how have you managed to keep yourself this strong and looking healthy at your age? The, yes. I want the young people now to take that. Okay. Mm. I think I've got to be grateful to the Almighty God, to my parents, to my family, my close family and friends. I think that explains why I've been able to live up to eight or nine years and remain uh, more or less healthy, generally. Okay. Having good company, have me being naturally well endowed from the genes of my parents mm -hmm. <laughs> and being taken care of uh, in the schools I visited, I, I went to, the friends I had at school, the friends I've had uh, throughout my life, good people. I think that gives, has given a good uh, environment. It has all contributed? Yes. To the good health you have up to now? I think so. I must believe you when you say so. Okay. That I've had good health. Doctor, when do you join the political dance hall in Uganda? I was always interested in uh, political developments in my country, even when I was at, at school. Uh, when I was, uh, uh, when I talk of p party politics, for instance, that brings me to Makerere, 1960, 1964, no, 19, 19, yes, 19, 1954, when the Democratic Party was formed, and uh, I was uh, at that time active, because I'd been a chairman of Baganda Students Association at Makerere. And he was following what was going on in the country with a keen interest and good contacts. And I was invited to be one of the people to sponsor for the formation of the Democratic Party in 1954. And uh, then I remained an active member since that time. How would you describe the group of young people? Because I'm sure you were part of the groups that put up spirited struggles for Uganda's independence. What kind of groups were you? I rather would like to say, not group, but what were the reasons? In 1957, Ghana mm. attained its independence. The first black African country, besides, of course, Sudan, which had earned its independence in 1956. But Uganda was particularly inspiring, and uh, the youth there, the students, and so on, had played a big part in uh, the struggle for independence in Ghana. And that inspired many students in Africa. And uh, at Makere was not uh, an exception. Definitely. So, and I had uh, had a visit in Ghana, 1957, uh, as a member of the World University Service Committee, because I was uh, at that time uh, in charge of foreign relations of St. Augustine Society at Makere. And in that, by virtue of that, I was a member of the World University Service Committee in Uganda I, here. We were invited to Ghana, and so I saw firsthand uh, the big names there, people in Ghana, Kuma, Sante Hene, and so on. So, well, Ghana, 
uh, led, led, led the, the fight and the university at Makerere followed and uh, we had presidents of different uh, or, or countries at, at uh, associations at Makerere mm. who, who took up this, the, the, who, who became interested in uh, uh, well pronouncing their countries in favor of independence. And Tanganyika was one. Tanganyika Student Association mm. I invited uh, Nyerere then, who was president of TAN, and he addressed us, urging uh, to take up the struggle for independence, for freedom. So in, mostly you were elite groups of young people from universities? In this case, yes. at Makere, yes. Mm. And uh, besides Tanganyika, then there was a Kenya. How would you describe your struggle for independence? We have seen youth trying to do a lot of things here and outside Uganda in many countries. But your struggle as the young people of the 1960s to see you in 1950s to see Uganda independent. Yes. How would you describe that struggle of you, the young people of then, to see Uganda independent? Well, uh, Uganda Unlike How is your difficult was it for you? I would say it was not so difficult because Uganda was a protectorate. It was saved the harsh colonial rule mm. that prevailed in South Africa, that prevailed in Kenya, right? So it was generally uh, a reasonable administration but colonial. And uh, in my particular case, as a member of the Democratic Party, it was also not so bad because the Democratic Party believed in, uh, of course, truth and justice, believed in uh, winning freedom, independence, but by peaceful means. So there was not the risk that some youths elsewhere uh, encountered say, in other countries. Uh, who immediately went the bush or whatever it is, it was done logically, it was done on the base of arguments uh, on paper, arguments in the newspaper, and we had good newspapers here. And uh, it was to demand the fundamental rights of the Africans yes. in an intelligent way, we, with whom, whomsoever we encountered, whether it was uh, lecturers, whether it was people in the newspapers, whether it was uh, governor's statements and so on. It was uh, an intellectual argument. You, you did not riot? You didn't demonstrate? We, we didn't. Uh, we didn't. We, we normally argued. Uh, yeah, we had rallies, we had meetings, yes. But uh, it was not violent, you know in the Democratic Party. Of course, we, are, we, we met challenges from some other uh, organizations as subsequently. What were the challenges, Doctor? The challenges? Mm. Yes, if I have to be very quickly, I mean quick in analyzing the challenges, the, the biggest challenge for the Democratic Party, which I belong to, was a misunderstanding mm. between the leadership uh, uh, at Mengo, for instance, uh, and uh, the political leaders in the country mm. who, sh who are aspiring for a national organization, a national campaign. Therefore, creation of political parties under civilian leadership. Mm. And there was a misunderstanding because... Uh, Between the DP and the Meng establishment? Yes. Mm. Uh, not, not just the DP, even other national parties, okay. especially following what had happened in, in Ghana. In Ghana, soon after independence, as you probably know, yes. uh, Nkrumah uh, 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 dissolved the, 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 the independence constitution and, among other things, abolished the monarchy. Traditional monarchs. Yes. Mm. And uh, that was sending the wrong message mm. that probably by forming that nat national political parties 
we have the same thing. Scenario. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it was very painful for me, if I recall, to see, for instance, Benny Chonoka and his followers, who included now the former leader of the DP, Matayo Mugwanya, who had been the leader of the, the committee that was set up to negotiate for the Kabaka's successful return, being classified as a threat to the monarchy in Uganda. <laughs> uh, even myself, yeah. who, who had been uh, uh, chairman of, of the Uganda Students Association at the university. At the university. <laughs> <laughs> all right. You were looked at and, as a and, threat. And, and, and whose uh, ancestry came back really to the first Sebuana, who was even an, an acting uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, king here before he came to came on the throne. Mm. So it was very painful. What do you think caused turmoil within the government of Uganda that came between 1962 and 1980? Because in that period alone, we had a number of them. What do you think caused the instant change of governments from 1962 up to 1980? Enlisting the military to be the, uh, the, 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 the staying power of the waiver was in, 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 uh, in leading the government, first with, with Obote. This was a, an, 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 a, a, a wrong ally to depend upon, to substitute for the popular will. So time came when Idi Amin and, and Obote fell apart. Mm. And that explains the collapse of Obote one regime mm. in 1971. Uh, then Amin, having the backing of the military to overthrow the government of Obote one, yes, it served him for some time. By the time came in 1979, when that military backing him was not strong enough to defeat the challengers militarily. Mm. And that brings in Moshi Conference, where people in exile and elsewhere gathered with the support of uh, President Nyerere, who had, an ax who had his own fight against Amin because Amin had invaded Tanzania. Uh, so when all those forces joined and they mounted the military attack on Obote, on, 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 on Idi Amin, Amin's forces were not strong enough to safeguard him. Mm. So he had to flee, go to Saudi Arabia and so on. <laughs> all right. And now we come to 1980. Yes. You see, in 1980, Obote got into power largely because he had the backing of the military. I was a presidential candidate in that election. It's very painful to recall. But the real explanation is that the military, the military, the military uh, with Paulo Mwanga as chairman of the military council, with Tito Okero, with Basilio Okero, and many others, they, they saw Obote losing and they, they counted on some international support for a, 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 a clever coup, right? A, 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 to falsify the, the results to ensure that, uh, that Obote uh, would, would emerge uh, a winner. Right, winner, being sure that militarily the, the challengers, that Semogre and others, were not in a position to, 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 to challenge them militarily. It is that that was the secret behind the, the, the stolen elections of 1980. Mm. But as before, as I've indicated in the case of Obote one, as before, that that cooperation between Obote and Tito Okero and Basilio Okero on the other on, on, on the other side f fell apart. Right, with the challenges, with the military, with the, with the Bush war by, 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 by Museveni, with the challenges on the ground, with the other forces, economic and otherwise, with the collapse of the support he got from international 
friends and so on. Mm. Our body will, will, could not now sustain. So the, 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 the problem between 62 up to 80 was involvement of the military? It, that is a, that's what I believe structurally. That was a problem. That the people in Uganda were denied the, the right, their fundamental right, to be the deciding factor as to who should be in government and how that government should run. Doctor, is it true you had won the 1980 elections? I believe it. Why? I believe it because the, the secretary of the Electoral Commission telephoned me to congratulate me upon our victory. I believe it because of the data we received, wherever it was possible to receive the data, it all showing that the DP was winning. I believe it because of the reaction of the military, the military, the, the military council, who were at that time backing, backing Obote. When they saw everybody celebrating and so on, they, they, uh, they had to stop it. So they, 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 they invited us, they threatened us, uh, and, they, and, uh, and, uh, and so on. And I believe it because under the circumstances, the returning officers were stopped by, by, by uh, pronouncement, were stopped from declaring the results and submitting everything to the military council chaired by Paolo Moanga. And that is where the forgery took place. Why did you choose to just sit back as the DP that had won and your victory had been taken away? Yes, Today sir. Today people go to court and things like that. Yes, I, I have told you the history of the Democratic Party and myself. We believe in a peaceful, more, uh, peaceful approach. We don't believe in uh, fighting. We don't believe in killing people for power. We believe in arguing our case as best as we can and convincing people and having a peaceful change. But was that appropriate at the time? Yes, and it paid. We, we had meetings here. When, the, when this decision was made, there was a lot of pressure. Even before the elections, when it was seen that uh, the arrangements for the elections were not uh, as, as uh, good as they should be to ensure a, f a free and fair election. We had debates about it, whether to participate in the elections or to stage a boycott. And um, I, when I look back at what we decided, I think it was, I have no regret for it. And we had friends, even internationally, and we, were, we, we believed it was better participate even if there were faults here and there. It was better for, for us to participate, it was better for people of Uganda to express themselves and uh, and, and go on. So we, we decided to, to participate uh, after debating democratically in our structures and agreeing and, and uh, when we, the results were announced again we debated. We had a, we had a national uh, we had the, the, the National uh, Council meeting uh, here near Dubaga. We invited all our leaders from all over Uganda. And we, dispute, we, did, we debated that issue. Should we participate? Should we go into parliament? Those who were elected? Or should we boycott parliament? Right? It was hotly debated. Very serious matter. And eventually, democratically, as a party, we decided to participate under protest and we went we participated in the legislature under protest okay and and uh, we used that time to really advance the case for uganda uh, far and wide we even uh, listed a lot of international support which the dpr or any other party had never had uh, before and and the culmination was a, 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 a colloquium by the Christian Democrat International here in 1984. Thank you so much, Doctor. Mm, you're welcome. We are taking a very short break on return. Mm. <clears throat> You'll give us a picture of how you ended up working with the UPM, NRA, later NRM, as minister. And why, again, you said you people, I can't work with you, and you went back to the DP. Actually, anyway, 
Had you left DP to work with them? No. Things like that. Okay. Uh, when we get back from the break, we will look at your service with the NRM. Then, how you see things today. You are welcome. Thank you so much. For mm. you watching, if you dare get off this show, <laughs> it will be you to blame. We have the man himself, first-hand information. He won the 1980 elections, and he believes because he has a number of facts with him. Thank you so much for watching. Enjoy this very short break. Don't go anywhere. We are with Dr. P.K. Semogedele, as he is normally called in the circles of politics in this country. And we are getting to look at Uganda yesterday, today, and probably tomorrow. Doctor, welcome back from the break. So, so we look at 1980. In the interest of time, we shall jump 80 to 86. So fine. you, DP, chose to go and fight on the floor of parliament. Yes. And a certain group of people went to, yes. to the bush. Yes. They come back from the bush, they take government, and they put up a, call, a government of... Uh, um, you can talk about it. Okay. Yes. So you joined this government. How was your time with the NRA, NRM government? I was at my house. Here? Yeah. I was at my house. And uh, this gentleman, Kaka, you know Kaka? Mm was being in Iso. Yes. You know, Kaka has a, an interesting background. Because in 1980, he was one of the deep youth wingers in Masindi. <laughs> who invited me, who welcomed me about half a mile before the venue of the rally. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but this is Kaka and some others, as mm. you know, with the uh, stolen election of 1980. Many of our DP members, without sanction from the party, <laughs> they, they went the bush. <laughs> so that is Kaka, mm. and, and they had now become somebody very big. So Kaka and, uh, and the Winnie Bianima was sent by whoever it was uh, to collect me and take me to Nabingo to 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 to, to, to see the, 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 the victors now. Well, I was Minister of Internal Affairs mm -hmm. in the government which had now been defeated. Overthrown. Right, so I went and... Uh, so they sent Kaka. people with the DP background? <laughs> you to, can to, say, to you, can, you can draw that conclusion. You can <laughs> ask himself why he picked those people. <laughs> right. Chances of you saying no, probably. Because I, I, I asked Kaka where I was going. He thought I was going to Salim Saleh. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's what he thought. He never knew. I think they, even with them, they don't disclose everything. So I ended up in Nabingo. I ended up uh, 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 with uh, M7, whom I had known before mm -hmm. when we was here at Intali School. Um, so we, 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 we talked friendly, like we are now. <laughs> mm -hmm. We talked friendly, and uh, the conclusion was to invite me to be part of the government. Right, and we discussed a few details mm -hmm. uh, with him. Did uh, you put up some terms and conditions? I'm coming. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. So, as before, after the conversation, we held our own meeting, the DP leadership meeting. We had the DP leaders, we had a meeting to discuss this uh, uh, approach. And we agreed on condition that there would be uh, a coordinating team, team of uh, NRM, team of DP leaders, to sit together and agree on the how we should co cooperate, mm -hmm. what kind of relationship, and, uh, so that we can come, yes, we shall come, but on condition that we have a, co a committee to work out the terms of uh, cooperation. And uh, in our view, uh, we, our uh, cooperation would be uh, more or less on the basis of normal coalitions uh, in democracies, where each party <coughs> has its own agenda and uh, terms, then the, the two would sit together like now, if you follow what is going on mm. in Israel, <laughs> all right, that's a very good example. Mm. To see where, where you agree, where you don't agree. Yes. And then yeah. finally, uh, you, you reach some conclusion. So we, we, are, we, we agreed on that one. 
and we had a meeting, joint meeting with with Museveni himself, and this 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 plan was agreed upon, and the the the, 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 the joint team was also eventually put in place uh, on the side of the Democratic Party. Our team was led by Joseph Mulenga, former justice of the Supreme Court, who was uh, acting was deputy national chairman of the party. Uh, and uh, other members, one of them is uh, Johnny Kawanga. You can you can talk to him. The former MP Masaka. Yes, mm. you, uh, uh, Masaka is still alive. Another one, Chitaliko, is unfortunately is dead. Uh, there was. Uh, How was your time in office as Minister for Internal Affairs in the NRM government? I was a victim. In 1969, the UPC following. Uh, Kaunda in Zambia, following Tanzania, following the, the, king, the, the key person, Nkuruma in Ghana, mm. believed strongly in one party system. So in 1969, the UPC declared December, they, they, they declared at the, at, at the address conference that Uganda should be the one party system. And at midnight that day, under the chairmanship of the then chairman of the then Minister of Internal Affairs, a former DP Secretary General, Basil Bataringaya, sat and they declared that that be put under law. Mm. And he made a statutory instrument banning all political organizations which were not UPC. DP being, of course, in the lead. DP uh, you had uh, never did that at his own group. I think we call Uganda Vietnamese Solidarity Committee. It was banned. There was a uh, Umutu, uh, Uganda Monarchist and Traditionalist Union Party. That was also banned, and so on. So that was done. And the following day, it was put in force by arresting mm. the key leaders in, the, those in these organizations. parties. Aha, uh -huh. right? And then the following day, as I was preparing to, to go to church, this, the, police, the policemen came mm. for me. So uh, that, I know that side of, 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 of uh, arbitrary arrest mm. and detention and so on. So here you it, are, now, minister. Now minister, right here. Now minister. And one thing I would not do is to sign a detention order. Already the, the same act under which I was uh, detained, the 1967 Public Order and Security Act, which empowered the government to arrest and detain without trial the person who was, who was invoked against us. And uh, it was still law mm. in, in, in 1985. Uh, mm. And uh, I found in my desk in my office several documents for me to sign for people to be detained. And I would sign none of them. I said, I, my hand cannot sign a detention order. I can only see people being tried, and then the court decides. I didn't sign under Tito. I didn't Neither can I sign I, now. And, I, and I, I, did, I didn't sign under Tito when I was Minister of Internal Affairs. Mm -hmm. And I didn't sign because I continued as Minister of Internal Affairs under seven, and I did not sign a single one under under seven. And in this, on this regard, because I'm interested in it personally, mm. I did two constructive things. One was to because when when seven is team, when seven is government, when seven took over power with me as Minister of Internal Affairs yes. and with the NRA now free at large to do whatever they did. If they considered Lukomwa to be a security risk, they would pick up Lukomwa, dump him at the police station, right? And maybe the destination is a prison, Zira and so on. So that was the situation. Uh, and I, I say I would not sign and I didn't sign a single one. But then this situation was continuing at police station being uh, filled uh, with people. Yeah, people like that. So I, 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 I set up 
a consultative team of ministers. This consultative team uh, would, would deal with this crisis. People being picked up, right? What do you do? And uh, luckily, this team cooperated in deciding if somebody has been picked up, then the law must be followed. He must be brought to court within the, the 48 hours which are laid down under, under law. Otherwise, it should not be, uh, it should be discharged. Okay. Right? Uh, how would uh, you describe uh, your working relations with Dr. Besiji as your deputy then? Good. But ideologically, we are not together. We believed in uh, the NRM ideology. Mm. And I believed in the DP ideology of multi-party democracy. But I have the greatest respect for him. Why? Because whenever a, a, a conflict would, would arise, we, we sat together. And when he realized that I have, have taken this part, firm line, he would just stand up and salute and go away. Wow. Right? We are, and at the end, of the day, when we were transferred, mm. I was transferred to Minister of Foreign Affairs, and when the president's office, I telephoned him to thank him for his cooperation. And he, re he replied, said, it appears we are the only ministers <laughs> who work together. <laughs> <laughs> Firstly, with President Museveni, we have very, very good relations. This I must say on record. There was never a personal conflict. There was never a clash. Uh, I thought it was very, very harmonious. This must go, go on the record. How about currently? What is the relationship between you and President Museveni? Well, I, I've never had any quarrel with him. Do you talk? When we meet, okay. we, we don't have a meeting mm -hmm. arranged. But if we meet a, a social function, wherever we are, meeting West Nile, we greet each other very well. Okay, how about phone calls or things like that? For what? <laughs> <laughs> and anyway, when you meet, what do you talk about? We are, we Politics? Don't, we don't meet for them. We don't. We have, we have not scheduled the meetings. Okay. But I mean, if we meet, so if Rukoma mm. has a, a wedding, or whatever it is, and invites President Museveni and invites me also, and we meet, they will shake hands. Okay. <laughs> no longer discussions. Eh? Okay. But why, Doctor? You and the group that worked with the NRM on arrival are blamed for having sparked the weakness the gradual weakness of the party because a good number of people are said to have stayed in the NRM when others, you and other people left in 1996. Well, first of all, why did we leave? I've, I've just... When you left there after serving... Well, first of all, we've got to know why, we, why I left. Mm. I told you this agreement for a joint team. Yes. A joint committee. The discussion took too long. So eventually, that committee uh, ended up its uh, own discussions and made their own conclusions, which were kept uh, secret, but which were which I shared and President Seven shared for strategic reasons. And uh, uh, frankly, I think they, they they came to very good conclusions. But when it came to implementation, they had to come upstairs. And uh, in the end, the, the, the problem was ideological differences, differences between us and uh, the NRM leadership. Okay. Uh, the NRM leadership wanted cooperation with the DP. The DP wanted the cooperation structurally agreed upon, as is normal. In, in operating democracies, where each partner retains its autonomy and its own agenda, and you sit down together and you discuss whether you can, whether you agree, you can agree on joint policy, and so on. Some stalwarts of the DP, but, but on the other, on the, on, on their side, mm. they not believe in that. And to me, as somebody who has studied organization organiz theory. I think they, they mean cooperation. Okay. I think so. Doctor, what you so uh, so we, we, we refused. Mm. We to refused to continue the cooperation. We, we refused to, to work under mm. that 
arrangement. You, you, you are blamed I, for having taken so many DP people into the NRM government. Yes. And on your exit, many remained there. Point mm. is, Mr. Lukomwa, mm. whenever you see all political parties in all countries, mm. whenever you have challenges, sometimes some people change their mind as to, as to what to do forward. When, for instance, Museven decided to go to Bush, I've told you that we, we sat, we agreed to participate in, 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 the, in the parliament under protest. Yes. Some of our friends did not agree. They, went, they joined the Bush movement? Yes, it was, uh, and they have to own, to, to own to it. Okay. Doctor, right? I want you to, to bring you to the present now. Yes. How, what do you make of the current state of your beloved party, the Democratic Party? No, I don't, I don't take the beloved party in isolation. I take the Democratic Party in the context of the situation as it is, as it, uh, even, even, as, as, even as before. For instance, in 1965, some of our members, particularly in the parliament, under the guidance of the, the then leader of the opposition, Bataringaya, examined the situation. And in their judgment, they thought it was better to join with the with with with, with the Obote, right, uh, and uh, that, than to stay the Democratic Party only to be persecuted. This came, this this comes to the, the the challenge more or less not on us but on the leadership, where the leadership uses the carrot and the stick mechanism, right to subdue people. Mm. If you don't join me, you are going to, to be imprisoned, which what one did, mm. all right? How would you describe now, the state of the DP in your words, Dr. Currently? Well, I think it is a, it is, it's a transitional period, for instance, now, for not just DP, but for Uganda. Mm. I think there is an ideological issue on the running of the government. There is a structural issue what kind of president should rule Uganda? This, this debate, I, I want to invite you to think about it very seriously. Mm. Because a long time ago in Europe, you had monarchies. You understand, you had monarchies. Time came when some people began disagreeing with the way the monarchy was run in their countries. And in some cases, like France, the monarchy was uh, abolished, mm. and the royalty were killed, you understand. In Britain, more or less the same dis 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 disagreement came about, and uh, some of the, uh, and some of the royals lost their lives. But eventually, Britain decided to retain the monarchy, but a constitutional monarchy. Okay. In Uganda, before you, you pass judgment on the DP, you've got to look at the structural setup we have got issues which are being discussed first, first partly in the political parties and at the end of the day by the individuals themselves. Now, in the case of Uganda, I think we have not learned the lesson many of these countries did learn to have a constitutional president. We have a president, even today, I understand the president, we have just been reading Monitor, where the president says you can pass legislation without reference to parliament. <laughs> this is in the newspaper of today, yes. all right? So th this is dangerous. It was dangerous in Europe. It is dangerous in the whole of Africa. It is most dangerous in the case of Uganda. Doctor, I want to give you a scenario. You, with all the turmoil in 1962, uh, you arrested in 69, 1986, you even say you won an election and it was not given to you and all that, you remained DP and solid. Yes. With all the groups of people around you. Yes. Are you not making a mistake to defend people that are running around today's DP, tomorrow is PPP, let tomorrow me come, is let me, come to, let me come to that. Isn't that wrong? Let, let How come you, you even served in the NRM government, yes. but you stayed the DP? Yes. 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 So, 
and, and, and others, these people say others, you, I serve these people say they I, look I, up to I you. I say the DP mm. uh, eventually Sam Kutesa decided to, to, to be NRM. Exactly. Uh, right? Uh, fine, but today uh, we are seeing too much of that. Yes. Well, these people uh, say they look up to you. Are you a good what, teacher, what, really? Let me say uh, uh, this is what I'm telling you. Mm. Given in the past, for instance, I told you of people in 1965 who confessed to me that they would go with the advice of Batari Ngaya to save themselves, all right? And they went, they went to, to UPC. And in 1980, many of these people were in the forefront of the resuscitation of the Democratic Party, mm. all right? I can see <coughs> even now yes. that uh, under the challenges right now, there will be many people who are faced with a difficult choice. Do I stay in DP officially, but no, no success? Or do I go somewhere else and serve better in the future? And that's a personal, personal thing. However, the solution, I, I, I have a solution. Yes. The solution we have found what are the structural problems? Just as I've, as I've been telling about the, the monarchy in Europe, what are the structural problems? Can we not have people, even those who are never in, U in DP, who see that this is a problem of Uganda? The problem is not that DP is not in the power, but the problem is we have got a, stro a wrong structural setting. For, nationwide? Yes, yeah, nationwide for the office of the president, a, straw, a, a, a wrong electoral law, whoever is in charge, mm. and uh, you leave the electoral law as it is, an incumbent appoints the, ch the, the, the electoral commission, and, the, and that incumbent is a, a candidate, and that incumbent is a commanding chief of the military forces, and that commander has to be obeyed by the military whenever he gives elections, Right? Is, is that right? Do we have uh, uh, a, me a mechanism to ensure peaceful retirement from office, including the highest office of president? Under circumstances we don't have. Given all those powers and, and, and the form of government, even the form of government is an issue, do we have the right form of government for Uganda? where everything is centralized and uh, the president can do anything. Well, Let me take you to parliament. Right? You understand? Yes. So uh, even parliament... Y y you have been a member there? Yes. You have been minister? Yes. Y are you now happy with the way parliament is running its business? Actually, the other day they celebrated 100 years. Yes. Do you think parliament is, has given us... The parliament has the problem I'm, I'm, I'm talking about this parliament and the previous parliaments have a problem with the powers of the president ever since the executive president was introduced in this country. That executive president, whether it is Obote, Idi Amin, or Museven, has an inclination to rule over parliament. We, we have had elections with, uh, that, that are under a multi-party dispensation in this country. Yes. 2006, uh, 2011, 2016, and 2021. Yes. On all, uh, at all the times, yes. the opposition has failed to have a coalition. And yes. By the time of the IPC, there yes. was the, the TDA. Yes. All of those grounds failed. Yes. What could be the problem? More so when they have you people that they can consult. Seniors in this thing that have seen. Well, it. you are talking to me now when I'm engaged in encouraging cooperation between uh, well intentioned people, not only just those who are in the opposition, but even some members in the NRM. I'm encouraging uh, focus on structural problems of Uganda. It's like when we were fighting for independence. Mm. Uh, a time came when we were able to agree on principles, and uh, once we agreed on principles, it was possible to negotiate for the independence of Uganda, mm. regardless of, of minor differences. And this is what we need now.
don't you see some element and, and I and, and in, in the opposition and in my greed is everywhere but I can see I'm for me I'm encouraged mm. I'm encouraged by what has, what we have achieved what has been achieved so far email email even merely to have brought these people together to see them together uh, when we met at Africana and they signed common principles mm. of objectives to which they, are, they still adhere, right? To see them do that. That was something achieved which has not been achieved before. You are the young people of the 1950s that gave us the independence. Yeah, that fought for independence. I want you to compare for me that th th your group, the young people of the 50s, and us, the young people of today. What do you think we can give this country? Do we have the capacity? You have. I don't believe that people in Uganda are less qualified. What kind of young people do you see in the group of today? You are one of them. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> By interviewing me. How would you me. describe For me, when group? I look at people in this country, mm. and I've been elsewhere. Eh? I, I've, I've been uh, to America, I've been to Britain, I've been to Venezuela, I've been so everywhere else. Uh, uh, you are as competent, as well gifted and out as people uh, uh, elsewhere. But these structural issues have to be identified, have to be identified and dealt with. Mm. And, and, and then you are liberated. And I, I'm, I'm looking forward that before I die, mm. I'll see Uganda liberated from these structural problems. Okay. It is possible within your, your competence. It's a question of explaining them analyzing them and forgetting uh, because even the DP don't say that we, are all, we have all been angels. Doctor, you're exonerating the opposition from the weaknesses amongst them. Saying, hmm? blaming it on the structural problems. Because that's where the, the problem lies. You don't see any problem with the opposition? Yeah, of course. Even within the government. What can I say? But people have, have got problems everywhere. Even in Britain, even in America and so on. You can see the, the eternal debates in the Conservative Party, where they are to remove uh, one Prime Minister after another. The debate now going on in, 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 in the Republican Party in, in America. The the problems are there. But are they structural? If, are if, if they are structural, mm. and if President Truman, I mean, uh, Trump, uh, uh, Donald, okay. Donald Trump, Trump mm. if he had powers like Museveni has here, he would still be President of America. <laughs> but here is, here, here is, here is Donald up. Trump mm. trying to involve the, the, the police and the military and the, 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 the back at him saying no, 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 no. As we wind up, uh, you are a senior parliamentarian. Yes. The MPs are going for speakership elections. Yes. What is your view? The main contenders are three, uh, the Right Honorable Kadaga, Speaker, Deputy Speaker Tenias, Speaker Tenias, uh, the Right Honorable Olanya, Deputy, Deputy Speaker ten years, then the Honorable Semuju Nganda, who has been chief of the opposition for some good years. Yes. What? How would you advise MPs that are going to involve in this? Yes, I can advise the MPs mm. along the, 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 my, my key argument of the structural obstacles, the structural issues. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, these MPs should judge the candidates on the basis of their ability to deal with these issues. Who is best qualified to guarantee the independence of parliament? Who is best qualified to entertain structural reforms which are essential for a working Uganda democracy, okay. right? Who will entertain uh, <coughs> the opportunity, the, the initiative to change the electoral law to make it uh, uh, to, to guarantee free and fair election in terms of, of, of the structure, the system itself? Can we move away from the winner takes all? which is uh, subject to be ma ma gerrymandered right now. And that's why you have so many people now in parliament, simply because the person in charge of ca the, the marketing constituencies wants to favor a particular party to, to gain more in, in parliament. 
right? Th these are things on the basis of which uh, a candidate, a, a PM parliament, should judge whether it is Kadaga who is capable of doing this, or it is uh, Samu Junganda, whatever it is. That is what, that my advice. Okay, just your message to the Ugandan watching, your last message to the Ugandans watching you, Dr. Poka on the Samogere. Well, first of all, I'm very happy to be a Ugandan. Really happy. And I say so, having had experience, uh, a wide experience of other communities. I've been a chairman, a chairman of the OAU. I have been uh, given many responsibilities under that umbrella. I've visited many of countries in Africa. I've had discussions with many of my colleagues, foreign ministers in different countries, heads of state. I have been to Egypt, I have been to Latin America, I have been to the Philippines, I have been to USA, I have been to Britain. And I, I find that if I were to make a choice where I should be born again, I would be born again in Uganda because of the people I, 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 I interact with, people who have participated even in my own formation, people, even people who have discussed and disagreed. I still find my home is, is here. So that is a key message. And I, 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 the second is that there are structural issues which must be addressed to make Uganda even better. Uganda cannot, cannot be together without a, a, a fully operating democracy, multi-party democracy, where we live together, unity in diversity. We, have, we are diverse in terms of ethnic origin, in terms of religious background, even in terms of a, a, a philosophical uh, orientation. But at the same time, we, are, we, can, we should work together. Thank and, you so and, much. And, and that's my message. Thank that's, you so that's much. That's the challenge. Doctor, Th thank you. Uh, to you watching us, uh, we cannot. <laughs> One hour is too small uh, for a discussion with Dr. Paul Kawanga, <laughs> some more because. There is a lot to ask him, but we thank you so much for following. Uh, my name is Michael Jordan Lukomwa with Davis Kamukama on the camera and Gloria Gutabingi, the producer herself. We thank you so much for watching and wish you the best of the night. Bye-bye.